The last example in this series on joint probabilities concerns non-destructive tests. Uh, although the problem is presented in terms of medical tests, the logic would hold for any non-destructive test with binary outcomes. So let's understand the terms systematically. What we do is we split the sample space into a partition of four sets. Uh, so those are t plus d plus, t plus d minus, t minus d plus, and t minus d minus. Uh, t plus is the test is positive, the t minus is test is negative. Now we could use uh, t and t bar, but just to emphasize where I, I have put the plus and minus notations. And likewise, disease exists is d plus, and disease does not exist is d minus. So this gives us a, a two by two truth table of true positive, false positive, false negative, and true negative. So in terms of these numbers, uh, A, B, C, and D, uh, which sum up to N, uh, we can define the uh, sensitivity, the specificity, and the prevalence. So the sensitivity of the test to disease is the fraction of people with disease who test positive, so that's A over A plus C, and that is the conditional probability of T plus given D plus. And likewise, the specificity to health of the test is P of T minus given D minus, and the prior knowledge about the situation is the prevalence of the disease, so that is P of D plus. And what we aim to do or what these tests aim to do is to update this prior knowledge of p of d plus with the test outcome so the predictive value of a positive test is p of d plus given t plus and that of a negative test is p of d minus given t minus so now let's just put numbers uh, from the problem statement so p of t plus given d plus is 95 percent and p of t plus given d minus is one percent and the prevalence of the disease is half a percent so from this point on we could apply our old friend the theorem of total probability so p of t plus uh, is given in terms of d plus and d minus and if you uh, put the numbers in uh, it comes to 0 0.0147 now what we have been asked is uh, p of d plus given t plus so for that we need the intersection probability and for that we use the definition of the conditional probability multiplied by the marginal so that comes to 0 0.0147 times 0 0.005 so that is 0 0.00475 so now we can again use uh, the definition of the conditional probability or in effect we are using Bayes theorem and p of d plus given t plus so the predictive value is 0. 323 now this might look small uh, that even if a person or a, a system comes out uh, as tested positive uh, it's only 32.3 person but you know, remember that our prior knowledge uh, had a probability of only 0 0.005 so that goes up to something uh, like you know by 65 times to about uh, 32.3 percent so now suppose we go one step ahead and uh, let us say there is a decision that if the first test comes back positive uh, the sample is sent for a second test now this second test has the same uh, properties uh, in terms of sensitivity and specificity but it is independent of the first test if not then you know we will not gain as much as we could in terms of increased knowledge 
So if the second test is also positive, uh, what is the predictive value now? So now what happens, all events are conditioned on T1 plus. So the first test came out as positive. Uh, the same sensitivity and the same specificity, uh, but the prevalence is now 32.3%, not half a percent. And now if you do the math once again, uh, the solution uh, comes out to be 97.7%. Uh, so now my predictive value through two tests, which are independent of each other, goes up uh, from half a percent to 32.3% and then to 97.7%. Now, I, I'll just leave you with this thought, uh, is that what if the two tests, instead of being independent of each other, were fully dependent? So uh, I just want you to think about it. A few of these numbers would become actually one, and then uh, you could find out is what would be the predictive value instead of 97.7%, uh, what we would be left with.